All right, let's get started. Welcome to today's session of Ask the Expert. Uh, today's topic is Stop Asking What Happened? Remote Monitoring of uh, Distributed Edge Container Applications. There are better solutions than a huge messy log bucket, which we'll actually see in a minute. Today, we have our expert Fredrik Jansson with us, who is our Senior Solution Architect here at Avasa. And with that, I'm gonna hand over to you, Fredrik. Thank you, Amy. So today uh, we're going to look at uh, what we call the monitoring pillars, uh, followed by a couple of demos. And then we will round everything uh, off by talking a bit about uh, next month's uh, Ask the Expert session, where we have uh, Josh from Databricks. But let's get started. So when talking about edge monitoring, uh, we have come to define uh, four pillars of, of edge monitoring. Uh, the first one, uh, which we call the bottom up pillar, is really the traditional way of, of monitoring an application. So as a developer, this is typically my go-to thing. Um, back in the days, I used to spend time in a debugger but more and more when I write code, I tend to use application logging. So you add log statements to your program that tells you as a developer or potentially someone else, but very often it's actually the developer who's the consumer uh, of the log trying to figure out what, what happened. So we call that the bottom-up pillar. It's all about collecting logs and analyzing those logs. The challenge can be if you have an application running at potentially thousands of sites. That is quite a few log lines being emitted. Then we have the second pillar, which we call the top-down pillar. So in this case, you let the system, uh, in, in our case, the Avasa system, treat the application a bit like a black box. Uh, you declare probes. Uh, in the Avasa system, we can or you can declare a startup probe where the system can query the container or the containers, have you been able to start up uh, in an orderly fashion? Then there is a readiness probe, uh, which I will use in the demo today, where the application can communicate to the system if it's ready. For example, it could be ready to take web traffic or uh, ready to take voice calls or, or anything. And the ready probe, an application can actually go in and out of the ready probe uh, or, or ready state, I should say. Uh, imagine, for example, that you're handling a lot of load. You could potentially take yourself out of readiness while you, you crunch through all that load. And then at a later point, you could become ready again to consume new traffic. So that is the second pillar, which is more of a top-down or, or black, blo uh, black box approach. The third one is really about uh, bridging the two, bridging pillars, meaning you, you always will have logs. Uh, you may have these um, probes, and it's all about bridging that, using the best of, of both worlds and to figure out what's, what's going on in the system. And the fourth pillar is really, does your system allow you to take action? So if you have a problem, how can the system help you uh, identify the problem and fix the problem and later on get a, a fixed version uh, of the code out there that actually takes care of the problem? So I would say that that is pillar number four, being able to act on what's happening in the system. So I'm going to start with this one, and it's it's a little bit complicated, but I, I, I will explain it. So just if you have thousands of lines of, of logs coming from different applications at different edge sites, it might be quite hard to figure out what's happening in the system just from looking through the logs. So we think that you can actually add a lot of value by providing state and context to the logs and to the probes and so forth. And that is really what this, uh, this drawing tries to illustrate. 
in the Avanza system, you have the application, uh, an application specification. And an application at, at this level is, is just describing what the app looks like. Then at some point you decide that you're gonna run your application, maybe in one store, maybe in a thousand stores. And those are really what takes the application and becomes application instances at the edge. So now when you have that, a number of things can happen to an application. So for example, maybe an application uh, crashes, you have, an, uh, you have an error in one of the replicas that you're running. And by knowing that this application runs at this site and a container has crashed at that site, we can actually provide that state and context flowing the error up into the application, indicating to the operator that your application has an issue at one or more sites. To the right here, I also have site health. And if you think about it, if the site, the, the actual computer or computers where you run your application has an issue, maybe you're running out of memory, maybe you're running out of disk, maybe you have overconsumed your, your CPU too much, that will actually affect the applications. So, so that's why site health can actually affect your application in a bad way. And the arrow is actually going the other way around as well. So suppose, for example, that you have an application and you haven't set up any guardrails in form of quotas, for example, and the application just run, uh, writes a ton of data to the disk. So that could actually consume the disk of the system where it's running and, and affect the system as a whole. So site health and application health is actually interconnected. Maybe not directly, but but indirectly. Uh, down here, we we have a probe on on one of the containers, and this just tries to say that if a probe fails in a in a service instance, uh, that failure should again replicate or or flow up in the stack like this. So hopefully that will make sense. So that brings us to the demos. The first one um, I'm going to start looking at is the log bucket. So uh, as you will see shortly, uh, we have a problem, and we're actually going to look at the logs to try to figure out what's happening. And since I'm actually having, I'm aiming to be able to fix this during the demo, I'm also including pillar number four, i.e. being able to fix uh, the problem that you see. So I will now switch to the web UI. So here I'm at the landing page uh, in our dashboard. Uh, and you can see these are the applications that we will be working on today. And there is quite a few red things, bad things going on here. Uh, first and foremost, we can see that Pillar 1 has an issue. So that's what we're going to look at momentarily. Uh, also have a number of sites. One of the sites is not well, and I will actually return to that when I'm talking about pillar three later on. But for now, let's let's try to figure out what's happening with the pillar one application. So I'm gonna click this one. And here you can see I'm, I'm trying to run uh, the pillar one application on, on four different sites. And actually on three of the sites, is everything is good, life is good. And I can actually go here and just briefly look at the logs. So let's uh, look at the logs real quick. Um, and it's logging. Life is good. Uh, application is happy. So, so this is great. But if we uh, close this one and go back to the application sites and have a look at core. So this tells me a few things. Uh, first of all, I can see that the application is actually crashing. Uh, so something is happening in the app, uh, it, a bug or, or something that uh, is going on here. And we can actually see that. So since I started this one uh, a while ago, it's actually been crashing and the system has been restarting it uh, 84 times. So this is clearly not good. And if I just let it sit, we will see this counter soon be 85. So let's look at the logs. 
And in the Avanza system, we actually collect uh, logs from all the applications. So in this case, the Pillar 1 application, uh, we store them at the site. And But by going in the UI, for example, here, I can ask the system to start streaming those uh, application errors uh, up into the UI. So I'll do that here. And here we can see what's happening. So, so I'm getting a log entry saying I'm starting the application and then I'm getting an error. It's it's uh, it's uh, it's a corny error, but obviously the the application doesn't run like to run uh, on sites named core, so it's just crashing. And and here we are. So even though it's it's uh, it's uh, it's a bit um, it's a very simplified example. Uh, this proves or, or hope to prove that by looking at logs, you can actually hopefully uh, in the real world, you will have much more logs, but figure out what's happening. And the way to fix this now is I'll actually have a bug fix. Uh, so I will actually update this application uh, to a new version of the container and I will hit submit here. And the system is actually set up now. So it will, whoops. Let me uh, fix this real quick. I forgot to push in the new image into the system. So momentarily, yeah, here it is. So new image is present. And now the application is actually happy again. So it's, it's up and running uh, at the core site. If I go back here, looking at the logs again, uh, we can see that it's logging the same thing. It's starting and it's logging. Life is good. So again, sorry, uh, sorry, sorry to interrupt here, Frederick, uh -huh. but I do have a, a question. Uh, sure. So the question I received is uh, we're looking at logs here, but are there other measures for troubleshooting uh, things like this? Yes. So if the container is crashing, uh, logs is pretty much what you have. Uh, if the container is running as it is now, uh, you could, for example, uh, open up a terminal, something like this. So, so here I'm actually in the, uh, oh, there is not much I can do in here, but uh, you can actually go into the container itself and maybe there are things uh, you can look at here. I don't know, I'm making something up. Maybe you have a database, maybe you have a database client uh, that you can use to look at data and, and figure something out like that. So if the container is running logs and, and getting a terminal is a great way. The third one I forgot to mention is if the container is running, sometimes just uh, restarting it is actually a, a way of, of uh, getting things up and running again. Maybe not the best way, but it, sometimes it works. Good question. So with that, I'm actually gonna go back in here and we're gonna talk a bit about uh, top-down pillars. So this is all about uh, probing and more of a black box approach. Uh, so I will go back here again. So looking at uh, pillar two, the application here, uh, we can actually see that it's it looks very similar. Uh, we have a different error now though no service instances already. So on the same site, we are having an issue. So let's look a bit at the application spec here. And if I scroll down a bit here, we can actually see that I've declared that I uh, a readiness probe. So every 10 second, every, every 10 second, the system, we do an HTTP get on slash ready on port 30,000 to ask the container, are you ready or are you not ready? And if you have, as we have here, uh, just a, a, a single uh, replica, if that replica is not ready, you will actually get an error. Then if no, no container is ready in an application, the application can't be functioning. So that is actually what we see here. So, so what is different here is that the, the container is actually up and running. We, haven't restarted it or or done anything like that just because of the readiness probe is failing. 
And it's actually a very similar problem. If we go back to the logs here, um, looking at those, let me do uh, a bit more later back in time. Oh, for some reason I don't see any logs. Let me reload here. Do this. And whoops. Click, click. some reason i don't see any logs uh, i know what the problem is though uh, it's very similar on this site the uh, the readiness probe will actually return an error so again uh let's use pillar four let's use our um, updated container the version 2.0 i'll deploy that and hopefully shortly here it's up and running uh, readiness probe returns okay and and life is good okay question for you here frederick uh if you would have had multiple service instances mm -hmm. would you have gotten mm -hmm. the same error as you did now if if you have multiple service instances of of this service here uh and just a single one of them is is failing uh, we mark that as a warning because then you would have one or more other instances that that are actually ready and can serve the application. Uh, had so so in that case you wouldn't get an error. You would get a warning. Uh, had you had multiple instances and all of them were were responding not ready, you would have uh, the same error. Yes. Thank you. Thank thank you. So last but not least. Uh, connecting the dots I'm calling this. So, so this is really about bridging the pillars, uh, uh, using uh, probing and, and uh, logs and, and site state, everything that we have to figure out what's happening. So last time I'm gonna go back in here. And here we have uh, uh, an issue that is very similar to the, to the first error. We actually have a container that is crashing on one of the hosts. So in this case, uh, what is a little bit different is I've told the system that I'm gonna run this particular uh, service one per host in the cluster that I have. And on this particular site that I call core, uh, we actually have four hosts. So I'm running one service per host in this case. And here on core four, uh, we actually have a problem. The container is crashing. So instead of just looking at the logs, I'm actually going to click here and, and go to core. So now I'm actually in the site view and I can actually see, and here I'm actually having an issue with core four. So here the system tells me that we are about to run out of disk. So in the Avasa system, we continuously monitor the hosts for CPU consumption, memory consumption, and disk consumption. And on this one, we're dangerously close to running out of disk. So we actually treat that uh, as an error. And we put the, the host in what we call distress mode. So this tells me this should probably be a hint to me what's what's actually happening in the application here because I'm about to run out of disk on this guy. So let me go back to the application, um, go to logs, and here we will actually choose this one. I know it's uh, service four, which was in error state. And here I'm actually looking at the logs. So I'm actually stop this here so we can see what's happening. So here it's logging. I'm starting on core four. Available disk is 17 something percent, and then I'm getting an error. So this application actually tries to write data to disk, but there is not enough space left. So this is an example of where something at the site, something at the host is actually affecting my application in a bad way. So the, the application tries to, to write data 
and it's failing. Uh, and hence, I'm having both a, a site issue and an application issue at this point. So what I can do is actually, I can go into this machine uh, here outside the share and clean up some disk space on this guy. So I'll quickly go back to sites here and hopefully in a couple of 30 seconds or so, the system will actually see that uh, there is now more disk space available. Uh, and this error should be cleared and hopefully the application will come up and run again. So let's give it a couple of seconds here. So now we can see that it's it's healthy and shortly we will actually see the, the disk volume uh, indicator here go down as well. So what I did was I was freeing up some logs on that machine uh, that I didn't need. And now the we have plenty of space. So hopefully here, going back to the application, uh, we can actually now see that the application, Pillar 3, is up and running on, on the core site, on all the, all the different hosts where I want it to run. So again, hopefully this proves first that, that host state can affect applications in a bad way. The, fa the fact that I knew that this guy was running on a host called Core 4, uh, I can get to that particular host uh, in the site view and see if I have any issues there, kind of allowed me to connect the dots and, and figure out what was happening in this application or what was affecting this application in a bad way. That actually concludes... Uh, the demos. So hopefully going back here, uh, you at least have an idea of, of what we mean by the four pillars, uh, bottom up, top down, bridging pillars, and last but not least, being able to take action uh, on these problems that you have. So that concludes today's session. So let me actually go down here and ask, are there any questions? Thank you so much, Frederick. We do have a, a question here. And if you have more questions as we go here, post them in the chat, or uh, you can also raise your hand if you prefer to, to say the question out loud. But otherwise, I'll be here in the chat. Uh, so the first question is, so you're working in a web UI uh, here. Is mm -hmm. if, if the user has a uh, a tooling stack for monitoring elsewhere already? Is there a way to to integrate or do you have to work through the web UI? No, 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 no. So so great question. So so yes, I was working in the UI. Everything I did from from getting a terminal or collecting the logs, uh, restarting stuff, uh, looking at the site, uh, what was happening there with the with the disk and all that. All of that is available through APIs, so it's it's usually really easy to to integrate this into some other system, uh, and we even have a, a CLI tool uh, called SubCTL that you can use if if you prefer working in a CLI with this. But yes, everything is API driven and can be integrated with pretty much anything else. Thank you. Second question here, uh, are there any best practices for monitoring containers at the edge as opposed to the cloud? Not really. I mean, it's it's all containers in this case. Um, they it's It's been known for long that containers should output their logs on, on standard out and standard air that uh, we pick up and, and store locally at the site. Uh, same thing for the for the hyperscalers or cloud providers. Uh, this is a well known way of, of of working. So I would say in, in general there is there is no difference really. Thank you. All right. Unless there are any more questions, we can uh, we can jump to the next slide actually. So I think that concludes today's session. Um, Thank you so much, Frederick. And I also want to give a shout out to our next Ask the Expert session, which will be on June 27th. 
Uh, and at that time, we will also have Joshua Green of Databricks joining us, where we'll look at some real life uh, experiences and implementation examples of uh, deploying and managing AI models at the edge. Do you want to add anything to that, Frederick? Justin, I'm, I'm, I'm really excited uh, to have Josh uh, coming on the session and, and uh, joining us for this. It, it's it's going to be a great session. Awesome. So we look forward to seeing you then. And uh, thank you for coming today. Thank you.